across the shield. Down by the DEP. Down by the DEP. Down by the DEP. Way down by across the shield. Down by the DEP. Down by the DEP. <laughs> And I'm from the Mountain Health and Heritage Association of Fayette County. We are a new group of concerned citizens that are opposed to mountaintop removal. <clears throat> and we are here today to discuss the impact of mountaintop mining on the health and economy of our communities in Fayette County. We are also here today to oppose Fraser Creek Mining Company's open fork number two permit in Fayette County. An appeal hearing for this permit is happening right now. And we are also here because coal from mountaintop removal mines accounts for less than 5% of the U.S. electricity generation. This type of mining is putting our children and our unborn children at risk. Is it really worth it? Uh, we will be hearing today from Eric Ottenry, a Fayette County citizen, Maura Kistler, co-owner of Waterstone Outdoors, Fayette County resident Bob Kin excuse me, uh, Bob Kincaid, 8th generation Appalachian and president of the board of directors for Coal River Mountain Watch, Dr. Dan Doyle, family physician in Fayette County, and Paul Corbett Brown, a human rights photographer. I would like to <clears throat> introduce Eric Ottenry. He's going to read a statement from the Mountain Health and Heritage Association to get us started and then he'll be speaking. Thank you. Thank you. This is a statement from the Mountain Health and Heritage Association concerning the uh, Page Kincaid public water system. Mountain Health and Heritage Association is concerned about the recent approval of the Open Fork Number no. 2 surface mine permit. This is what's going on inside. The operations of existing permits by the Fraser Creek Mining Company. The Open Fork Number no. 2 surface mining operations will significantly encroach on the source water protection area of the Page Kincaid Public Service District wellheads. The Page Kincaid Public Service District services 2,000 people, including 400 children. The PSD's source of water is two deep wells in the Pottsville Aquifer, which is the only feasible water source for the PSD. In 2003, a source water assessment report was completed for the Page Kincaid Source Water Protection Area. The report rated mining operations with moderate susceptibility as a potential contaminant. This report was followed by a source water protection plan in 2010. We've also learned that private ground water well users have had their wells contaminated by mining operations from Fraser Creek Mining Company. This evidence further supports our concerns about protecting critical public drinking water supplies. If the Page Kincaid PSD wellheads become contaminated, from nearby mining operations, there is no contingency plan in place to offer customers safe drinking water. Furthermore, the contamination of heavy metals into the Pottsville Aquifer would pose a serious threat to human health. Health. The PSD's engineering firm estimates it would cost over $5 million to upgrade the water plant to treat heavy metal and other contaminants from mining operations. Possible contamination from nearby mining operations has the potential for economic consequences as it would likely cause customer abandonment of the system and thus force the PSD to default on existing loans. To date, through federal, state, and local funds, the PSD has invested $6.7 million into the current water system. The DEP has a duty to protect this significant public investment and more importantly, the health of our citizens. For the above reasons, the Mountain Health and Heritage Association strongly urges the West Virginia M Surface Mine Board to prohibit mining within the source water protection area of the Page Kincaid PSD or to permit surf wa surface water discharge from mining operations to leach into the source water protection area. Thanks, That's Aaron. the end of that. For years, we have seen and heard the stories of people desperate for protection from the disaster and misery the mountaintop removal mining brings to their communities. Flooding, poisoned water, coal and rock dust, damage from blasting and psychological stress. 
We found it hard to believe. So we went to Prenter and Cayford Mountain and Twilight and Marsh Fork to see for ourselves. We went to the DEP and to our state and federal lawmakers to see if it was really true. And it is true. The human and environmental disaster of mountaintop removal mining is heartbreaking and enraging. But that is not the worst of it. The worst of it is that our DEP, under the governor's hand, and our state and federal lawmakers and the system of laws all conspire to put corporate interests before the welfare of real people. Our public servants who have sworn to protect the people of West Virginia have not. In an August 2001 court opinion, federal judge Charles Hayden condemned the climate of lawlessness created by regulators, politicians, and coal operators. In a January 2010 Science Magazine article titled, Mountaintop Mining Consequences said, mining permits are being issued despite the preponderance of scientific evidence that impacts are pervasive and irreversible and that mitigation cannot compensate for losses. In some places, government participation in harming its own people would be considered a crime against humanity. In almost all measures for quality of life, West Virginia is at the bottom of the national barrel. K-12 performance is 50th, environmental stewardship 47th, top states to do business in 46th. Overall rank for well-being in West Virginia, we're dead last. And the worst congressional district in this worst state in the nation is the most coal-rich region of the state, Congressman Ray Hall's district. And the disaster continues. On Manchin's way from the governor's office to his Senate seat, he sued EPA because it was actually beginning to enforce the Clean Water Act. Last week, Congressman Ray Hall crafted and pushed through his committee a bill to strip EPA's authority to enforce the Clean Water Act. And amazingly, Senator Rockefeller continues to trumpet his defense of coal companies and dismiss overwhelming scientific reports of global environmental harm and says nothing in defense of the poisoned, flooded, brutalized people in the communities he has sworn to protect. For years we have watched the disaster of mountaintop removal mining coming our way to Fayette County and now it's here. Our community leaders are determined that we will not allow our children, communities and waters to be poisoned by accidental, deliberate clouds of dust, chemicals, sludge and floods. We will not allow the black greed of coal and friends to do to our beautiful Fayette County what they have done to the rest of the state. The climate of lies, hatred, and community conflict fostered by Cole and friends must end. Laws putting minority corporate interests before the majority of real people must be changed. We demand that our government protect the people and the environment from industrial harm. We need government leaders, not just good politicians, but real leaders who have vision and courage and energy to make the effort to find a better way forward keep people working, address our national energy issues, but first and foremost, find a way forward that protects the people and waters of our state. And I'd like to thank uh, Amy and Ginger for the opportunity to speak on behalf of tourism-related businesses in Kayak County. Um, I'm here to report from the trenches as best I can. Um, I don't think we need to spend a lot of time establishing that Fayette County is, if not the crown jewel of the Fayette County tourism uh, offering, at least it's one of the top big stones on the tiara. It's right up there. It's gorgeous. It has all the photo ops that we're all used to. I don't think we need to spend a lot of time talking about why we need to defend and protect this area. Um, the, tur the tourism is providing a stable platform for growth in Fayette County is undeniable. I've spent the last three days buried in a series of studies that show nothing but growth and vibrancy from this sector of the economy. It's happening. Our story uh, of my husband, Gene, my business partner, Kenny Parker, who's also here, our story is very representational. We came here 20 years ago as tourists, as rock climbers, and fell in love with Fayette County and thought, what the hell, we are going there, we are throwing our lot in with that amazingly special place that is 
is blessed with world world-class climbing resources, boating resources, birding resources, you name it. But add to that a, a remarkable local citizenry and a charming town, we were in. So sure enough, tourism has a terrific record of diversifying the economy. There's a lot of numbers behind that. It is a vehicle for spawning entrepreneurial growth. That's what happened with Kenny and Jean and I. We loved it. How are we going to stay? We're going to start a business. And that's what we did 17 years ago, Waterstone Outdoors. You can look around Fayetteville, the Vandalian, Secret Sandwich Society, Pies and Pints, the uh, New River Bridge, or Bridge Brew Works. These are all the same story. These are tourists who came to Fayette County, fell in love, stayed, and established businesses that are adding tremendous diversity and financial resources, providing that for our state. All we ask is the opportunity to let this train roll. This train is taking us where we need to go. Is tourism the be all and end all? Hell no, we all know the jobs don't pay that well. We've heard the stats about the coal jobs. Yeah, they pay better, they also disappear. So the, what the tourism economy is doing is like this great sneak peek at Fayette County. Come on, check it out, and then think about bringing your business here. It's happening. When you get people to Fayette County, they love it. Look at the Boy Scouts. So now our business, basically, we've been open 17 years, 362 days a year, slugging it out in the trenches. It, has it been slow? Heck yeah, it's been slow for about 14 of those years and in the last several years this is what it's doing which goes along with all the stats in all the studies it's starting to take off we have turned the corner we had the best June we've ever had this past June thank you very much Kenny and uh, we're proud of that we have worked bloody hard for that we want the opportunity to roll and now what are we looking at we're looking at all these signs that are telling us what our problems are. We are looking at mountaintop removal. I saw one sign that said, it's uh, chocolate and peanut butter go together, not mountaintop removal and tourism. And uh, exactly, mountaintop removal and tourism are more of an oil and water situation, I do believe. Um, there is a philosophy in planning called incompatibility of uses. That would be, say, putting a horse farm in a downtown area, putting a daycare center in a industrial park. There are certain things that just flat don't make sense. Ripping the tops off mountains, one ridge over from where we're trying to put a message out of <laughs> greenery and relaxation and come enjoy yourself and get away from it all just don't just don't pay attention to the, that blasting of course um, but this does not work this will not work it mountaintop removal does not work down south it doubly doesn't work here where we've actually got something to build on we are asking for that opportunity to build on it give it time where does this leave us? It leaves us, as Eric mentioned, desperately seeking leadership. I am asking our local, our regional, and our state leaders to take a little courage. Join Matt Wender, our Lone County Commission member who is charging with this. Round of applause for Matt Wender, thank you. There's some courage for you. That is what we need. It's not that hard, come on. And that's what we're looking for. This is a great start. I feel like I'm looking at the core of what's going to drive this for Fayette County. But Fayette County deserves it. It's special and we can get anywhere we want to go if mountaintop removal doesn't shut it down. Thanks for your time. Hey,